In locally advanced resectable disease, uh, the role of radiation versus surgery has been com uh, compared in a number of trials. The commonest approach used in trials has been to deliver chemo and radiotherapy at the same time before surgery versus an approach including chemo and surgery only. The reason for exploring concurrent chemo radiotherapy is that it causes downstaging more effectively, so more tumors are downstaged, potentially making it easier for surgeons to do a, a complete resection. A meta-analysis of these trials was published last year and showed that actually there was no difference between the two in terms of overall survival. And that comes about because uh, the longer-term outcomes are determined by patient factors and fitness. And in the short term, the surgical arms often have a slightly increased mortality, but in the intermediate to long term, it sort of balances out. So the recommendations, for example, by ESMO is that let an expert multidisciplinary team decide on the best uh, treatment sequence. So if you have very good surgeons, an expert team with good mortality and complication figures, you'll be more likely to use a bit more surgery in these patients. On the other hand, if you're a center without expert thoracic surgeons, and then standard chemo radiotherapy can be delivered in at most oncology centers. So center expertise cannot simply be translated from one center to another. Now, the, the, the Swiss have done an interesting trial because they're a group with a very long track record of evaluating surgery. So they asked the question in the most recent trial, when you are going to operate on a patient, is it better, sufficient to give chemotherapy or should you add chemo and radiotherapy beforehand? But what they did is that they did not combine the two at the same time. It was not concomitant chemo radiotherapy, but they gave that uh, sequentially. They concluded there was no benefit of adding radiotherapy before surgery, but they did not ask the question whether surgery was necessary in the first place. The second point about the Swiss study is they showed that the likelihood of tumor progressing before surgery and the likelihood of tumor recurring after surgery was higher in the arm without the radiotherapy. So I do not think that the Swiss study is likely to change practice or guidelines in, in the uh, rest of uh, Europe or the world. If you're going to do induction therapy, the guidelines are clear and the evidence from trials is giving them both at the same time seems to be the best way. The German ESPA2 trial also evaluated the role of surgery, but they gave concurrent chemo radiotherapy to both arms with or without surgery, and the arm randomized to not receiving surgery got a higher dose, and they found no differences in outcomes as well. And the conclusion was, again, uh, both options are suitable in patients in the hands of an expert team. So I think we have two treatment options, but one treatment option, chemo radiotherapy alone, can be more widely applicable because chemo radiotherapy followed by surgery does require expert surgical uh, knowledge and care and post-operative care. And I think there are reasonable options in expert hands, both. So at our center, we do concurrent chemo radiotherapy for all patients and in patients who undergo surgery, we do it if the surgeon feels there's a, well, a need to ensure radical resection margins, that's the first thing. So the two instances where we use it are, as a, in, a, in a very routine fashion, are patient tumors of the superior sulcus, the lung top growing the chest wall. We give all of them chemo radiotherapy to 50 gray before surgery. And a second in, uh, instance is younger, fitter patients where a lobectomy can be performed or a sleeve lobectomy, then we give a preoperative dose. But that is decided up front in a multidisciplinary tumor board with the surgeon determining that. If the surgeon is not sure whether he's going to do surgery, then the tumor board in our experience says, well, go to 60 gray. There's a likelihood we will not do surgery, but we will review the case. But if the surgeon is confident up front for single station N2 disease where lobectomy can be performed, we would perform that or discuss that option with the patient because all the evidence from trials tells us 
they are both good that both chemo radiotherapy only or chemo radiotherapy with surgery are acceptable and good treatment options. A meta-analysis in locally advanced non-small cell lung cancer showed that concurrent chemo radiotherapy alone in operable uh, stage 3 disease gave a comparable progression-free and overall survival as induction treatment followed by surgery. However, the results of the recent Pacific trial, which showed an 11th month improvement in progression-free survival in the patients who underwent immunotherapy for 12 months after completing chemo radiotherapy, calls into question the role of surgery. So we need surgical data to show that this magnitude of survival benefit can be achieved with surgery alone. My own feeling is that with this very effective tool available now, immunotherapy after standard chemo radiotherapy, it will further entrench the role of non-surgical treatments in stage three non-small cell lung cancer. Because if the two are comparable and one approach has made a big breakthrough, it, clinicians may be more uh, inclined to uh, use the non-surgical approach in future.